The route from simple light detection in the eye to complex visual experience in the brain involves an orderly projection through several structures. The axons of retinal ganglion cells project to the lateral geniculate nucleus, or LGM, in the thalamus, which in turn sends this information to the primary visual cortex in the occipital lobe. This area is necessary for conscious visual perception, and it projects to association cortex in the occipital, temporal, and parietal lobes. These areas integrate visual perceptions with other types of information for more complex tasks, such as identifying objects and using vision to guide motion. There's another smaller projection from the retina to the hypothalamus to a structure called the suprachiasmatic nucleus, or SCN, which is responsible for controlling daily rhythms. This pathway has nothing to do with visual perception, but rather serves as a light detector, so the SCN can use this information about the light dark cycle to schedule activities such as eating and sleeping. Let's look at how visual space is represented in the visual pathway. The left and right eyes capture images from both the left and right sides of visual space, as shown in this figure. For example, the inside part of the right eye and the outside part of the left eye both detect stimuli in the right visual field, shown in red. The optic nerves carry information from the eye to the brain so that the inside part of the right eye crosses over at the optic chiasm to the opposite or contralateral side of the brain. The pathway from the outside part of the left eye stays on the ipsilateral or same side. So ultimately, the signals from the right visual world all end up in the left side of the brain. If you follow the blue lines, you can see the same arrangement is true for the left visual field. After the optic chiasm, these axons continue on each side through the optic tract, which continues to the lateral geniculate nucleus, or LGN, in the thalamus. The axon terminal synapse here, and then the signal gets sent through the optic radiation to the primary visual cortex on the contralateral side of the brain. Therefore, information from left and right visual space is sent to the primary visual cortex in a way that conserves the properties of the visual scene. Let's consider this arrangement by looking at vision loss resulting from damage to different parts of this pathway. If the right optic nerve is cut, then there will be, of course, no information sent from the right eye. The resulting blind area encompasses the left and right sides of the visual field that the right eye services. The right optic tract carries information about left visual space from each eye, so if it's cut, the resulting impairment would be the left visual field. The importance of an intact optic nerve and optic tract are highlighted by the losses apparent when there's damage. The nature of these deficits also highlights the map-like organization of visual space that is retained along the visual pathway.